Welcome back. So we're on the third phase uh, of the FTF goals. Fact, actually no, fantasy, theory, and then fact. So we've talked about fantasy so far. Fantasy is whatever dream you actually have. And bringing that into reality essentially allows you to transition that into a theory. And the theory is just this idea of possibilities and opportunities and putting all that those into place. But the last part of that is fact. So how do you turn the theory uh, or the idea that essentially is is coming into form uh, within the real world? How do you actually uh, solidify that into a fact? And so that's what we're actually discussing today. So there are two, two steps uh, essentially in creating that reality, creating that fact. And uh, they essentially are in, tied with perception and action. So the very first one is moving into form. So perception is this idea of moving something into form. It's, it's what you understand, it's what you see, it's what you believe. And the second part is actually making it happen, making it happen. and that's the action you actually take. So everything that I'm talking about is in relation to the sleeper car that I've been searching for. And when I first thought about it, uh, I had to come up with a reason. And so when I come up, came up with the reason, I had to understand what that reason was, and I want to move it into fact now. So I had a few reasons around wanting that sleeper car. At first, they were more on the personal um, side of everything, but then I expand that quite a bit uh, so that it would impact me positively with my family. It would impact me positively uh, as a prof within my profession, and it would uh, also be a reminder of all the struggles that I've actually been able to overcome and accomplish. So those are my three reasons. But putting that all together, that is essentially part of the root of the creative process. Once you actually have that reason, it has to grow and it has to be able to get stronger. Now, once you actually have those reasons in place, you don't need to essentially know what to do in kind of moving forward with it. So once you have those reasons, that's the reasons are things that you want to essentially strengthen. But what that reason does is it keeps uh, acting as a reminder of what you're actually uh, moving in and going out for. And in not knowing uh, where to start or even not necessarily knowing what the next pieces are, uh, you can still make it happen. And the whole idea around that is one real fundamental thing uh, called visualization. And so with that, you have to think and act uh, as the person that has already achieved whatever it is that you want. Like, that's the secret. The perception piece, you have to step into the shoes uh, of the person that already has the results that you're actually looking for. And when you are when you do that, you are going to make decisions just as that person would. It, it seems kind of far-fetched because we never really think about that being a way forward on what we actually do. But it's a visualization exercise. And the whole idea is that you're not thinking about what it will be like when something actually happens, but you're already stepping in that person's shoes and you're actually living your life within that capacity. So for me in the sleeper car, I already have the sleeper car. That's the position I'm putting myself in. I already have my behind sitting in the seat. I'm behind the driver's wheel and I'm actually driving it and it's something that I'm actively doing. And so with that, I need to understand, okay, if I'm actively doing this activity, what are the, the nuances and the details and what's that experience like? Because that's what I'm actually living and that's what I'm able to envision. And in taking that, that then is something that you can sort of push into real form. Now, when I started this exercise, I had no idea what, what that really meant. Uh, I didn't have all the details as far as exactly what I was looking for, but as I went through the process, I got uh, more details fine-tuned as far as, okay, what is it that I really want? Like, I had an idea of what I wanted, but I didn't have the detail. And once I started this visualization exercise, I started thinking about the needs of my wife and my son and my daughter and kind of bringing that all together because those were my reasons of why this would be a much more, a much stronger pursuit, not just for myself, but for my family as well. So when I started doing that, then kind of the details started coming about. And when that actually happens, then you start uh, taking advantage of what you actually know and what you're able to put together. So as I got those additional requirements, I put that into my vision 
And then I had to start taking action on what I was looking for. So what action allows you to do, instead of looking for anything and everything, like how would you define a sleeper car? Something that's very unassuming, but is powerful under the hood. But when I started turning the dial a little bit, I realized that, okay, I need to make sure that there's ample room in the back seat because my son's growing. He's going to be probably about the size I am uh, within a very short period of time. He's growing like a weed. So there needs to be plenty of room for him. So when I started looking at some of the vehicles at first, that changed actually what I actually had to look at. Uh, instead of looking for mid-size sedans, I had to look for full-size sedans. And that changed everything up quite a bit. But what it did is it changed my direction and it helped me navigate in the direction I actually needed to go. So that's how your actions essentially continue to get refined. And so with that, anytime you start taking action, especially when you're looking to create something in effect, you also want to put a deadline to it. Deadlines are really important. It's not really something that folks really want to put out there. Like, you know, I want to get the sleeper car when I have enough money to get it. Like, that's not that's not what you want to put in there. You want to put a date. You want to put a date that you feel comfortable with that uh, essentially just gets your mind working on solving the problem within a period of time. If you don't put a period of time there, your mind could just keep looking at all the possibilities but not actually getting you um, any closer to the finish line. So when you put the deadline there, the deadline says, okay, this is what I want and I want it by this date. And your mind sort of figures out, okay, how do we actually make that happen? So for me, in regards to the sleeper car, as soon as I started talking about it with my family, I said, you know what? It's something that I can envision us having within a year or two's time. That's how long I had. So 12 to 24 months. And so the idea came to me in May, June timeframe of 2021. And uh, I was thinking that I would achieve that in May or June of 2022 or 2023. Uh, and the first thing what we needed to do is identify the right car for us. And then we just kind of had to stay aware of the deals and the opportunities that, as they come. Now, what allowed me to accelerate that quite a bit uh, was actually looking for the deals. Once I started uh, visualizing, understanding what we were actually looking for, then I kept scanning and scanning and scanning and identifying the opportunities that actually lined up with what we were looking for. And so the first thing I looked at was, okay, uh, let me figure out a way to purchase this vehicle and not use my own money. Uh, so this whole idea of other people's money became a really interesting uh, piece because usually you don't use your own money. You think, okay, can I actually afford this? But if other people are actually paying for it, well, you're not really worried about that so much anymore. But again, I was always still looking for deals. So I was looking at what could provide me more value than I was actually per, uh, paying. But at the same time, I didn't want to have to pay for it myself. I wanted to think of, okay, how can I use other people's money to actually buy this for me? Uh, some other pieces I actually looked at were, were, I wanted to get a great price. And usually you can only get a great price through negotiation. Someone doesn't usually just come to you and say, oh, I have a great deal for you, right? And usually when they do, that's not really a great deal for you. But when you can identify what you're looking for and you can find someone who's motivated and if anything, you're going to help them by, let's say, purchasing something from them uh, just for the fact that they're in a bind or they're just in a tight spot, um, they're motivated. And usually when someone's motivated, you have more negotiating power than otherwise. So I look for those two pieces and I also looked at, okay, well, you know, looking at all the things that are kind of lining up will... The vehicle that I'm looking at even fit in the garage and actually found out that it that it wasn't. So all the things that I that I thought uh, were going to line up and be kind of how I imagined didn't actually turn out that way, but everything moved very quickly, very quickly. And uh, essentially, once I had all of the details as far as what I was looking for, I had to go out into the world and actually manifest it. So you actually have to make things happen. And this is where the action piece comes in. But you want to keep doing it in a repetitive loop over and over and over again. And the whole idea is you're gaining momentum the entire time you're going through this process. Now, as far as what actually turned out for me, it's kind of funny. Uh, the, the result ended up being uh, a result that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of. Uh, and it kind of has its roots in one of the one of the movies I can remember watching um, when I was younger called Gone in 60 Seconds. Uh, they had uh, to pull off this heist and uh, one vehicle um, in particular, which they named all the cars, which actually I'm a big fan of naming cars as well. 
but they had the vehicle named Samantha. And Samantha was a, what was it? A 2000, a 2004 Mercedes S600. But they didn't actually have an S600 on the set. They had an S500. And supposedly it was the unstealable car. So I don't know how everything kind of came together, but the vehicle that I actually ended up finding that hit all the bells and whistles was a Mercedes S500 formatic. And it is the same model as this idea of this unstealable car. So I sort of like look at that and I'm like, wow, I would never have guessed that that would have been it. But the funny thing is not only did that end up being the vehicle, but when the vehicle came out, um, close to that time, the vehicle was $80,000. And I can, I don't really even kind of imagine paying that amount of money for a car. Uh, but again, I was always looking for a deal. But just as the article that I was actually looking through said it, it said, you know what, if the if the team or the crew during the movie had uh, just waited a little bit, they probably could find a car just like that uh, for $5,000 and actually come ahead. And that's exactly what I was able to do. I was able to find a Mercedes S500 formatic for $5,000. Now, did it start at $5,000? No, I had to do some negotiation, but I was able to get it for $5,000. Now, there were some other things that happened. Uh, again, not everything's perfect in the way that you actually imagine it. However, that was the start, and I just had to continue taking action, continue taking action, continue taking action to slowly transform this vehicle into exactly what I envisioned and exactly what I wanted. And that's it. That actually happened. So following this FTF framework, remember, fantasy, theory, and fact, I was actually able to create and manifest the sleeper car of my dreams. And I hope this lesson and just uh, some of the pieces that I have mentioned uh, just resonate with you. And I hope you can take this framework, put it to use, and make your dreams actually come true. So I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, I enjoy sharing uh, this information, this message, just about my own journey. And if you're interested in more as far as, okay, what was my journey uh, once I actually purchased the car and some of the challenges I've dealt with even after that point, uh, I encourage you to stay tuned in because I actually explain how the whole process for purchasing, uh, repairing, and renovating uh, this S500 is going. So thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to having you on the next episode. All right. Bye.